bipolar, today's bipolar. Um, yesterday we started with depression and um, all the aspects of depression. We went on a bit of a, a journey, a bit of an investigation about the depression. Now, bipolar is, is linked to depression. Um, bipolar is actually the next step or it's actually more in-depth type of depression, mood swings and things like that. But it, there's a link to the depression in the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, today we're going to just talk around the topic. So, bipolar disorder is the name used to describe a set of mood swings or conditions that most severe form of which used to be called manic depression. So, so it's like when someone t say, talk about this person's a manic, got manic depression, that's basically the same thing. Bipolar disorder number one, so there are two, two versions. Bipolar one is the more severe disorder in terms of symptoms. Okay, so they, they experience mania, um, they've got longer highs, um, they have psychotic experiences, and they're more likely to be hospitalized when they have bipolar one. Um, so, and then bi bipolar two, um, is diagnosed when a person experiences symptoms of a high but with no psychotic experiences. Um, these hypomanic, hypomanic ex um, episodes tend to last a few hours or a few days. Okay, a few hours or a few days. Um, okay, um, but the study suggests that impairment of, is often as severe as in bipolar 1. Um, the high moods are called mania or, or hypermania, and the low mood is called depression. So, a um, person with, with bipolar will be very outgoing, very happy, very like, and then the next moment they'll be down. Like, really, really down. I know someone who had it. Um, they make plans. They say, hey, let's go to the movies. Let's do this. Let's organize stuff. Let's, and then you organize all the things, and then when everyone gets ready to go, they hit it down. It's like, I don't want to go anymore. And they like really start to become rude because suddenly they don't want to do it. But they, they just drop into the down. And then that causes a lot of conflict because we're all like, okay, but we wanted to go to this. You organized this. You wanted to do this. And now suddenly what's wrong with you? Um, but it's part of this disorder that they give you a very high, but just as high as you can go, you can go low. And when they go on a low, some of them go really low. Uh, so just be aware of that, be more conscious of the fact that, that there are differences. There are, that's why we talk about mood swings. Um, ha happy, very, very unhappy, or very, very low. Um, however, it is important to know that everyone has mood swings from time to time. We all have mood swings. I mean, I'm talking to a room full of women. What are you saying? What are you implying? No. Uh, mood swings. You know about mood swings. You all have husbands. Yeah. Mood swings. Okay. That's how I got myself out of that one. Okay. It is only when these moods become extreme and interfere with personal and professional life that bipolar disorder may be present and a psych psychiatric assessment may be warned, warranted. So not like if your kid today has a mood swing, she comes home from school and she's got a mood swing and then like, oh great, my kid's got bipolar. <laughs> there are many people out there that self-diagnose themselves by having like, oh, some days I'm very happy, some days I'm very sad. Isn't that all of us? Um, there's a book written by Dr. Russ Harris, the guy from ACT, and it's called The Happiness Trap. Um, it's a great book, um, The Happiness Trap by Dr. Russ Harris, and he says in the first chapter, he talks about happiness, where we live in a society where we exceedingly want everyone to just be happy. He says people that you, we can't constantly just be happy. We have happy and sad and we've got different emotions. A person that's constantly happy, 24 hours of the day, seven days a week, need to go see someone. 
because you have a problem. You need to speak to someone because that's not normal. Okay? We are not always just happy. So we need to look at... So bipolar is the really up and downs, but in such a degree that you can't really function. It influences your personal and your professional life. So just take a note of that. If you feel sad and then happy, you are not bipolar. Okay, so don't go home and say, oh, I know what's wrong with me. I'm bipolar. No, you're not. You're just a normal person. Okay, so this is a totally different area. Okay. Key points about bipolar is occasionally people can experience a mixture of highs and lows at the same time or switch during the day giving a mixed picture. Some people may only have one episode of mania once a decade, while others may have daily mood swings. For each individual, the pattern is quite distinct. So you will have clients that come into your counseling room that's got bipolar, but each client will have different symptoms. Each client will react different to the di disorder. Okay, so there's not like a, a little grid and we tick all the boxes and yes, you've got it. One person might, as we say, might get it often, one person might every once in a while have these, but when we talk about mood swings, we talk about huge mood swings, like cannot function type of mood swings. Like if they're low, they're really, really low. Um, like low in the sense of want to commit suicide low. And if they're high, they're like really high and very hyper. And almost like that aunt that each family has that likes to organize everything and make everyone happy, that's where you are. So up and down, a big fluctuation. Right. Um, so people with bipolar can experience normal mood swings in between their swings, but the majority experience some low level symptoms between episodes. So there's normal time periods. So it's not just always up and always down, there's always normal functioning times and then suddenly it hits up and down. Um, but as they say here, there can be also little variations in mood swings in the time between the big ups and downs. So. Okay, women and men develop bipolar 1. So women and men, yesterday we said when we talked about depression, that statistics show that most, or not most, but it is a larger number of women that have depression or, or get depression than men. So with, with bipolar 1, women and men get it, um, but bipolar 2, it is higher in females. So women get, there are more women that get bipolar 2 than men. And it might again be like when we talked about depression, it might be a hormonal thing, uh, might have the influence in, in that, that cause. Bipolar disorder can commence in childhood, uh, but onset is commoner in the teens or early 20s. And again, it's very difficult to, to diagnose bipolar or depression amongst teenagers because a normal teenager looks like someone that's got depression or bipolar. Because that's the normal way they, they react. They, they either like want to kill you or want to want to just shower you with love and the next moment they're actually sad that they didn't kill you when they were really loving and, and kind to you. And so, so that's why it's very difficult to diagnose it amongst our teenagers because a normal teenager has all the symptoms of someone with depression. So. Uh, just be aware that if stuff happens and keeps on happening for quite a while, we might look into depression but or bipolar. Some people develop their first episode in the mid to late childhood or adulthood. Many people can go for years before it's accurately diagnosed or treated. Okay? So it's not so easy to diagnose because of the fact of the up and downs and the normal periods of time. And it's, um, it's a bit all over. So they need to, they also talk about having a mood diary where you actually write down your mood swings and things to monitor how you are in the process of, of this, um, this disorder, how it's actually active in your life. 
women with bipolar disorder have a very high chance of a significant mood disturbance both during pregnancy and postpartum period. So we talked about it yesterday again when we talked about depression, is that if a, a woman's got depression before, um, before getting pregnant, she will most definitely have postpartum depression after giving birth. There's a, a high, high possibility of that. Same with this, and it might also increase um, because of that. With the right treatment, the vast majority of people with bipolar are able to live normal and productive lives. But that's where it's important is, the treatment is important. Again, like yesterday I referred, because they link together with depression and with this is on your medication, you need to be absolutely strict with using your medication. Same time, every day. So if you, if you drink your first tablet, eight o'clock in the morning, every day, eight o'clock in the morning, you have to have your tablet. They work exactly. If you drink your tablet the next day, nine o'clock, there's gonna be an hour when you didn't have, weren't covered by, by the meds. It was worked out. So, so it's very important that you stick to a very routine on when you use these, these medi medications. Another thing is they work on your brain. So they do have an influence on your brain activity. So we can't mess with our brain. Uh, stick to what you need to do and be strict on that. Some people with bipolar disorder can become suicidal. It is very important to talk of suicide um, and take serious and take that seriously. Be, when someone talks, in general anyway, when someone talks about suicide, we have to take it serious. Um, we lost, we, um, one of the workshops we did on suicide, we talked about myths. And um, one of the myths is people that talk about suicide never do it. Um, the other myth is also that people that never talk about suicide do it. So don't take those myths into consideration at all. If someone, especially someone that's got a bipolar disorder, depression disorder, if they show signs of or saying stuff like, I want to commit suicide, or they have the signs starting to give stuff away, starting to say goodbye to people, all those things, really take it serious. Um, we are in the, the people helping business and also the people around us. We've got duty of care to the people around us. So make sure that you're aware of the signs. And if someone say, I want to kill myself, or you know, all the other little things that we say, uh, please take it serious. Don't ignore. Causes of bipolar. Number one is genetics. Uh, sometimes it's granddad or grandmother's fault. Bipolar disorder is frequently inherited with genetic factors accounting for approximately 80% of the causes of the condition. So about 80% of the causes of bipolar is because of the genes. So awesome. So if Grand had it, there's a big chance you might get it. You have an 80% chance of not, a 20% chance of not getting it. Let's be a bit more positive. Okay. But the negative is there's 80% chance that you might get it. So if one parent has bipolar, there is a 10% chance that, that his or her child will develop the illness. If both parents have bipolar, the likelihood of the child developing the illness rises to 40%. Okay, so if one parent, if two parents. Uh, it would just because one family member has the illness, it's not necessarily the case that the other family members will also develop the illness. There are other factors also involved, but there's a big chance. There is a possibility this will happen. For example, we have brain chemicals. Same with depression. Um, serotonin, our happy hormone, the one that we can't reproduce once it's used up, it's used up. Um, that's why we use our antidepressant to actually fill that serotonin levels up. Um, yep. So serotonin is the one that makes us very happy, and if we don't have it, we are very sad. Um, 
if you don't really want to, if, you, if you're not on meds, um, another good thing to do is make sure that you use a very big with vitamin B complex. Um, in general, that helps. And also bananas. As we said yesterday, bananas give you bounce. Um, that's the only fruit that actually helps you to reproduce serotonin in your body. Environment. Uh, if you live in a really, really stressful environment, it can also cause it. Um, so um, stress is a big influence on this. Again, we also have seasonal, again the seasonal one. With depression, we talked about seasonal depression, especially people that live in areas like the snowy areas, Canada, um, Northern Europe, um, people that live in, 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 especially like England, um, not lots of sunshine, they get really, really depressed. <laughs> so, so seasonal things is some people, so in those areas, especially the, the Euro European countries, people get depressed in the cold winter months and more happy in the, because of the, the sun. So, uh, yeah, medical illness, uh, medical illness is not a cause of bipolar, but in some instances can cause symptoms that could be confused with mania or hypermania. Some medications and certain illicit stimulant drugs can cause manic or hypermanic symptoms. So again, drugs are not good for us. Uh, just in general, drugs are not good for us. I'm not talking about medic medicine, I'm talking about in general um, the little drugs and things. Um, it can also be a trigger for this. Antidepressants can trigger manic or hypermanic episode in susceptible people. Um, so that's why doctors would sometimes <coughs> have to keep on changing medication. Because we all don't, um, like, we, we, we never, every person reacts differently to the medication. So you'll find that a doctor will prescribe something and you'll find it will not work. Go back, have it changed. Uh, even if you are on antidepressants or anti-anxiety meds, make sure that from time to time you actually go back to the doctor. Have it reviewed. Have it because we get used to it in our system and suddenly it's not working as effectively as it's supposed to be. So just be aware of all of those factors. Pregnancy play a big role for women. So um, for women who are genetically or otherwise biological uh, predisposed to being bipolar, the postnatal period can coincide with the first episode of bipolar disorder. Okay, so you can read a bit more about treatments for bipolar during pregnancy if if it affects you or it, it might affect one of your clients when you when you have a client. Okay, so just be aware that it's got it can have an influence on your clients. Uh, Symptoms, and um, any one of you, um, uh, or just be aware of this, this is something that you're going to get in your counseling room. You're going to get clients that's got bipolar. You're going to get clients that's got depression. You're going to get clients that suffer from anxiety. This is part of, part of the field that we work in. So be aware of that. Um, diagnosing bipolar is often not a straightforward matter, as we said earlier. Many people go up to 10 years without being diagnosed and getting treatment for it. Um, there are two points to consider. You must have had episodes of clinical depression, and you must have had highs where your mood was more up than usual, or we felt wired and hyper. So it felt like you were on stump something. You're like wired, you're hyper, you're, you're like just like, you're so hyper, you help the poor old lady across the street 10 times. And she didn't even want to cross the street, that sort of thing. So, so you're just hyper and you run around and you irritate everyone in your house. And then the next moment you're so low. It's like, how low can I go? That sort of low. So, so just be aware of it. Um, these are the things that you need to be aware of before diagnosis or going to the doctor. Those are the questions that they'll ask you is how hyper are you? Um, key points is, first of all, it is an illness and requires long-term treatment. It's not a quick fix. Okay, it's long-term, so we're talking about years, not just a few months, popping a few pills and I'm happy. 
it takes some time. Okay, uh, everyone is different, and therefore treatment is different for every person. So, so don't use your friend's medicine. It's like if your friend had bipolar and she's like no longer bipolar, and uh, it's fine. I think I've got bipolar now, so I'm going to start drinking her tablets. It's not going to work for you, right? Don't use someone else's meds. Every case is different. So um, go to a doctor, go to a skilled practitioner, let them help you. Okay? It's, we don't self-diagnose. And we also do not diagnose your client. So don't say to your client, hmm, you might be bipolar. Uh, um, they'll go home and say, they don't say that I might have it. They say, my counselor said I've got it. And they'll be happy because they diagnosed. Um, so do not, as a counselor, do not diagnose. Do not say, you, I think you might have this, or you have symptoms of this. It might be, uh, just say to them, um, I think just go and have this checked out by the doctor. Um, I don't know what's wrong with you, but have it checked out, that sort of thing. Be careful not to diagnose. Physical treatments are necessary, okay? So we need to have medicine, um, the right medical management, but by people with bipolar disorder can achieve stability and live successful and productive lives. So the meds are important. They help you to be stable, okay, and productive and happy, right? Also, it's important that you also go for counseling. But it, they work hand in hand. So you can't just, it's more effective if you use the meds and go for counseling then just go for counseling or just use the meds. If you, if you go both hand in hand, it will help you really. It's, like, it's good to approach it from both ways or attack the disease from both ways. Um, so. Okay, they say keep a, a daily mood graph. Okay, so a mood graph or mood diary where you actually write down how you felt today and actually in the end just draw a graph to see your ups and downs. Um, that can show you how you're big and how low your, your ups and downs can be. It's just to make sure or to keep track of what's happening for you because it's not that easy to, to diagnose. Um, having a well-being plan is important. A uh, well-being plan is also good to look into your, your diet, your exercise regime, your, the way you do stuff, the way you do life. Um, who's your support network? Who are the people around you? Who are your friends? Um, if you have a bunch of bipolar friends, it might not work um, because you might all be very hyper and you all, might, might all be very sad at once. So, so get a bit of friends uh, across the board. Okay. So, so just all right, and then recognize your relapse signature. Recognize symptoms when you're starting to to fall into this disease or the, the disorder. Like, know when you're starting, like if you're depressed and suffer from depression, you know yourself, you know what's starting to happen when you are going to go into a relapse. Same with, with bipolar. You know yourself, you know when you're going to go up and when you're going to go down. You experience stuff in your body is happening. Um, you're starting to feel agitated or you feel hyper or you feel sad or whatever for no reason. So, um, know yourself. And, and, uh, and, and, um, it's like people that suffer from migraines, they know when they're going to get a migraine. Um, there's certain things happening, certain behaviors, like some people become extremely thirsty and say that, I know something's happening. Same with this one, is you know the triggers, you know the symptoms. So that's the end of our bipolar talk. Um, so I'm going to switch off the cameras now and then we're going to have a bit of a chat and questions and comments and stuff uh, so yeah so anyone who wants to switch off my camera that'll be awesome